Hello there. My name is Gene. I go by the name Gene on Earth. And I run a record label called Limousine Dream. And before we get started today, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about how this class is going to be. But now I want to sort of show you what I was looking f looking to do, which is I'll show you sort of a few principles I'm almost always applying throughout almost all tracks that I make, which is first, if you're going to, because you're obviously going to have to take, take away elements at times. You can't just purely build up elements the entire time. But if you're going to take away elements, you're going to lose energy in the track. And if you lose energy, that's when people on the dance floor are going to go for uh, go to the bar or go to the bathroom or go for a smoke break or something like that. And so if someone, if a DJ plays your tune and they notice that that happens in this one part in your tune, there's, a, there's an energy drop and then sometimes they lose people, maybe they're not going to play your tune uh, as frequently as they might otherwise if they know that it always keeps the floor f full. Uh, so something to consider is whenever you're taking away an element, so see in here, you can see that it's sort of like, it's just building, building, adding some more drums. It took away those elements, but it added these elements. And then it continues building and building and further building and building. And now here you see that there's a big, there's a big drop off of elements. Like I take away a lot of the drums. And if I hadn't added that, that sample in right there, it would be a pretty significant energy drop off, I would, th I, I think. Uh, so the, one of the principles is to, if you're, delete, if you're taking away elements, you always need to be adding something in their place outside of maybe the outro of the tune or certain special situations. I mean, another thing when it comes to, not the music production, but the DJing side of things, was that if you're looking in the top 10 of Beatport or whatever, and or or even the news uh, of new music, I'm not saying you shouldn't look at the new music, so there's lots of good stuff coming out, but if that's o the only place you look, you're going to be looking in the same place that everyone else is looking. And so how, how are you really gonna be that different uh, of a DJ from half of your peers who are looking and playing the same stuff? You kind of, if you, I feel like you kind of need to find a way to set yourself apart. Uh, and the same stands true of making music. Uh, if you're trying to make music like the music that's coming out, you're probably going to be trying to make music that sounds like a lot of other people that are doing the same thing. Uh, and so by starting to dig, uh, like just whether it be in record stores or on Discogs or whatever, uh, and just find stuff not in the news section, but in the used or the old section or whatever, uh, eventually you're gonna start to build your own taste rather than having your taste influenced by what is coming out at that moment. Because if you realize you like a sound, if you find a record, it's not on any charts, you just like it, that is you basically building a taste. And if then if you start to make music based off of uh, sounds that you found right then and there uh, from this like random 97 house record from Germany. Uh, and then you realize, then you find another record that sounds somewhat, I don't know, whatever, but it sounds like something that you like. That's how you're going to start building a taste. Or that's how I started building like my own unique taste rather than a taste influenced by what was current and what was new. Another thing that I like to add a lot is this Decimort, which is from D16. Uh, they're probably like my main plugin go-to other than, other than Waves. But it is basically a bit crusher, and I pretty much always go in 
to the presets and just use the MPC 60 preset. So listen to what it sounds like without. You can, like if you look at the frequencies here, like look over up in this high range where they are. It's, it's, there's a lot going on up there. Uh, and now if you bring this on, you see how it drops off like that's this is how you're going to make something sound less digital so look, look right here those are the high frequencies now when you turn it off you can see it's just higher up right there than when it's on it drops off uh, so I'm using that on a lot of stuff specifically on like high frequency stuff uh, to dirty it up a little bit and make it make it go down if you don't have that though if you want to have a similar effect to what the demo decimal is doing within Ableton uh, it's what I used to do was if you want to make something sound a little bit dirtier is take the erosion plugin which is if you do it hard it's gonna be like this gonna but if you do it soft uh, and just bring this up like around there and then go over here I've did this if you're if you're this is if you're looking to make a sort of analogish sounding thing uh, which I generally am um, then I would bring this down to about 15k put something like erosion on or something like uh, Redux and again using it in a super small amount taking that soft down see if you go hard. It's like it's hardcore, but if you just go Just a little bit up to like 1.4 and it's already got that going on uh, But that's just showing you how you can do a similar version of what I'm doing with the decimort uh, If you don't have it So now instead of sampling these another thing that you can do is i'll show you like with this one which is there's a fair amount of stuff going on in the melody itself it's quite a bunch of quite a bit of stuff um so what you can do is you can right click in here and then select convert harmony to new midi track now what this is going to do is basically guess Ableton's going to read the harmony and, and replay it in sort of what is the instrument, like a, a Rhodes piano that it just inserts. Um, so let's hear it. And one thing to do first, uh, let's look for outlier notes that maybe aren't actually part of the, like these are, whatever those are. So now we've got that kind of weird, admittedly weird melody, but I'll show you what you can then do. Say you again use something like the mini in its place. That sounds weird, but let's get some sort of key element. Now let's just bring it down a little. Like that, bring this decay down. So now you've got, I mean, not, not that bad of a thing. 